Steven, it's a new year. It's 2022, and I've got a big, fat, juicy wish that it's going to be a year full of fulfillment here on You Can't Disappoint a Podcast. What do you think? I've got a big old sauce-drenched wish myself just slapped on my plate here in front of me, and I'm going to dig in to a whole nother year of You Can't Disappoint a Podcast. It's going to be a big year full of winding down our rewatch of Community and moving on to whatever comes next for us and to be a part of it with us. There's so many ways to show your support. We've got a big old warm pool here for you. Come on and slip on your skibbies and slide down the ladder and dive in. How, how can they get in this pool, Zach? <laughs> if you put your toe in the water and it feels fine and you want to get waist deep, come join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast. It's the way to support this show and to help us move it forward as we move into the future. It's also the way to get more of us every week with our live pre-show every week. You can't just a pre-show and all kinds of Patreon exclusive content coming all the time, Steven. We'd love for you to support us on Patreon, but you can also hang out with us free of charge over on Twitter at You Can't Disappoint. We are also on Instagram at Can't Disappoint Podcast. And we're on Facebook and YouTube under the whole name of the show, You Can't Disappoint a Podcast. Also, if you would like to be a part of the show every week, you can email us at can't disappoint podcast at gmail.com. To be a part of next week's podcast, write us in your trivia, your favorite funny moment, and your episode MVP for next week's episode of Community, and we'll read it out loud on the show. If you like what we do here, leave a review wherever you leave reviews about podcasts. Yeah, maybe like... The Sharper Image product review site. Leave us a review there. Uh, There's like a box full of sticky notes at my post office. Write a review and leave it there. I hope you guys are jumping on board with us and you're ready to traverse 2022 with me and Steven. What do you say? Let's rip our way into another episode if you can't disappoint a podcast. Cannonball! <laughs> I'll put like a big <laughs> splat. <laughs> Can you what do you know all the stuff that the guy says? Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. Get everybody and your stuff together. Yeah. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. I think there's more to it than that. No? I don't think so. Let's get everybody and their stuff together. Well, whatever. Right. You can look that up Three, if you two, want. One. Welcome to You Let's Can't jam. Disappoint a Podcast, everyone. A special edition of the program. Uh, we're coming to you. Oh, this I was wrong. Yeah, go ahead. You have the floor. You have the talk. I think stick. it's time we blow this scene. That's what I missed. Get everybody and this stuff together. I knew there was something okay. else. Three, two, Who's one. Who's the real Let's fan jam. now? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We're here uh, in, in a special edition of the podcast this week because... The month of March is kind of busy boy central. Uh, Steven's mm -hmm. got a lot going on. I've got a trip. Uh, the day that this comes out, I'll be getting back from a trip that now is still a couple weeks in the future. This is a weird... We've been in this time loop before. We're in the time yeah. loop again, everybody. Uh, Steven's moving. That's exciting. Hi, I everyone. Am. I'm Zach. I'm Steven. Yeah, you're moving. That's exciting. This is the second time you've moved or the third time you've moved since starting the podcast? Second? This will be the second move since starting the podcast. That's crazy. Now, you're, I think, lucky that you live in a room with a roommate where your stuff is pretty much just in your room, right? For the most part. That makes it a lot easier to move, I'm sure. Yeah, it does. I don't have to, like, <laughs> go around and, do, like, yeah. My stuff is confined to this space and pretty much this space. So <laughs> The first couple times that I moved, it was, like, put all my shit in trash bags and put it in the back of a truck and drag it around. Nice. And then now that I live with my partner when we've moved, oh my god, it's f***ing miserable moving all the furniture, moving I'm sure. and being like having people that help for like a second and doing like the most of it just the two of you all day. Mm -hmm. It's exhausting. But that has nothing to do with anything. Sorry if that makes you <laughs> in a bad mood to move. I'll be fine. I'm I think you'll be fine. At pack yeah. Yeah, and that's exciting. I'm really happy for you and Danny. Mm -hmm. Danny actually uh upped her patronage so now she's in the gets to move in and live a beautiful life with Steven. Yeah, Baker it's too. a it's a an exclusive club. I can't club. Even afford it. 
Yeah, yeah. it's tough. Is it going to be hard for her when she realizes that there are other patrons in that tier and they'll be sharing the house as well? I mean, she knows what she signed up for. It's a, it's a, it's a service that's available to anyone that'll pay. <laughs> Okay, so let's get into things. I want to start off this uh, special edition of the program shouting up our $10 and up patrons over at patreon.com. Whomst without, uh, there would be no Brokeback Bebop for you to preview today, which is what we're doing. Uh, So I want to shout out, and hopefully, this is in the future, hopefully all these people are still patrons when this comes out, but that is uh, Danny M. Lugo, Mary Baker Budisa, Brian Thurman, Taylor Ace, and Planeswalker Prez. We love all those people very much. And we hope that uh, a couple of you might get some incentive off of what we're showing you today to maybe hop on the Patreon. You get all kinds of stuff over there. We do You Can't Dis a Pre-Show every week before we record the podcast live. And that's always really fun, whether we're playing games or making Oscar predictions or doing like tier lists. It's always really fun. Uh, We've got early access to You Can't Disappoint, a podcast every week. And we have what we're previewing right now. We've got uh, (laughs) our Cowboy Bebop rewatch podcast, Brokeback Bebop, which is coming out on Saturdays. Steven, right before we get into it and they're about to hear it, we're going to preview for you guys two episodes of Brokeback Bebop today. If you've never seen Cowboy Bebop before, here's how it's going to work and be interactive and fun for you. We're about to play the first episode episode of Brokeback Bebop. So if you've never seen Cowboy Bebop before, it's a great opportunity right now in a moment to hit pause, go watch that episode, find it wherever you can online, and then come back, listen to our uh, our recap. Then what we're going to do is we're going to meet back here, me and Steven, in the present past, and we're going to talk for a second, and then we're going to play episode three of Brokeback Bebop, because I really like episode three. Uh, That's when we started getting a little bit more outrageous and funny. I might even have to censor it. So that's another reason to become a patron, because uh, you can get get the uncensored version, super uncensored on the show. That's the one where we got a little more wild, but not too wild. So I really Mm -hmm. like that episode. So what you're going to do, you watch episode one, uh, press pause, come back here, listen to episode one, go ahead and watch episodes two and three, Come back here, listen to episode three, and then go join the the Patreon and listen to episode two, listen to the uncensored versions of episode three, and then four through where we're at now. Doesn't yeah. that sound great? Before we started, though, I want you to tell the people a little bit uh, why uh, Cowboy Bebop is such a special show to you and why we've chosen to do it as our as our second project. Okay, so I love Cowboy Bebop. It's like a sci-fi space western. Right, that's how I describe it. It's Absolutely. about uh, a space ragtag jazz. It's crew, a bit of a, bit of a, a, bit of a cosmic, cosmic gumbo. gumbo, moves to the beat of jazz. Um, but it's about three, uh, you know, ragtag, ne'er, not necessarily ne'er do wells, people who are kind of down on their luck. They're all finding their place in the world, and and they work, you know, various forms of togetherness. But they work together to catch bounties and try and make a quick buck. Uh, out here in this wild expanse called space, it's got some good action, some good story, and an incredible, incredible, credible uh, soundtrack that, you know, that alone is reason enough to watch the show. Um, but if you need more of a pull, uh, it's got a corgi. And I, and, I, and I think you don't really need more than that. Well, let's give the people what we're here for. We're going to preview for you the first episode of Brokeback Bebop. Before I, we mentioned our patrons, because this is a Patreon thing, we gotta just, I'll just give a nice nod and hello to our community papa at Communities on Twitter today. What we're doing today doesn't really have much to do with community. It's just because uh, I am a, a whiny, anal little bitch, if I'm anything, and I will not <laughs> let the feed go empty for a week. We have podcast friends. We had some on for a roundtable that will go away for months and bring their podcast back. No problem. The audience is still there. People still listen. Not me. We're doing this every <laughs> goddamn week until we die. It's true. Or it's nothing. Uh, So that being said, it's just a nod and hello to to our communities, Papa, at communities on Twitter. Give them a follow. And let's do this. Let's listen to the first episode of Brokeback Bebop. Are you excited to share it with the people? I am. I'm so excited to just throw this out there on top of all you strangers. It's always nice to put things like this that we put work into uh, out on a platform where people will actually listen to it. Right. Yeah. So have fun. So here it is. Let's Uh, go. Fasten your space seat belts and... Have a sip of mm-hmm. tea. I, I meant to say have like a, a bowl of. Let's of just get out of here. Let's just do it. Bell peppers and beef. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Yeah, Here's the first episode. The what was the first one called? Uh, uh, Asteroid Blues. Here's the first yeah. episode of Brokeback Bebop. It's Asteroid Blues. Let's go. We'll meet you back here in the middle. Blow this 
scene. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay. Three, two, one, let's jam. Hello, everybody. Hello, patrons of You Can't Disappoint a Podcast, and welcome to the inaugural, inaugural, how do you pronounce, inaugural? Immigrant. To the immigrant, no, I'm not going to say that. (laughs) Welcome (laughs) to the inaugural edition of Brokeback Bebop. I can't believe that's what we're calling this. I didn't think of a pun for my name, but I am Zach, but you know that already because you're a patron. Howdy, partner. I am Steven. And we're here to start this new venture where we're going to be going episode by episode all the way through the, I don't know, do you say that it's a cult classic or just a classic? It's a classic, Zach. The classic anime, Cowboy Bebop. It transcends the genre. So why don't we kick it off, I guess. Steven, you know that I've never been much of an anime person, not just because I have anything against it, but just because I've always felt like I'm on the outside kind of looking into it. I never really clicked with it. I didn't watch it a ton as a kid, so it's just never been a part of my... Uh, thing my my media intake has it but you're you're a huge anime guy i'm a pretty pretty big anime guy are we doing video for this no okay uh my room's covered in anime shit but they probably know that if they're oh yeah they're a patron yeah but i i have liked anime literally for as long as i can remember zach some of my earliest memories were watching pokemon or Mm. dragon ball um you know some of those late 90s anime that like were really popular they used to show on cartoon network or for kids TV yeah. on Saturday wow. mornings. I did catch some of those, yeah. Yeah. And I I don't think I really knew what anime was until I was in like third or fourth grade. I was like, okay, anime is this. Yeah. These shows are from Japan. That it was I see separate that now. from just cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. See, okay, so I think I watched Pokemon and stuff and I knew it was kind of different, but I didn't really know mm-hmm. what anime was or I guess from my perspective, I didn't really see you become like Anime is at this point one of your like core character. Yeah, it's in my Instagram traits. bio. You're an anime dude. You're a dancer dude. Uh, so was it just in the last couple years that you really became fully immersed? I don't remember you always wearing I, anime stuff or yeah. having a ton of anime shit. Well, I think uh, big reasons for that are one, like I wasn't as into anime as I am now. Definitely sure. in like middle school, high school. I got back into it when I was like in college Mm -hmm. um, because my friend who I lived with at the time, we both liked a couple of anime and then we started watching like some more. Uh, But I think probably (sighs) regularly I'd be watching at least like one or two anime that were like were coming out. Like when I had like time or even before that. Um, probably around like college time and after Mm -hmm. that, normally it would just be like what's on Toonami on Mm -hmm. Cartoon Network at night, but it wasn't like as like dedicatedly watching. Sure. Um, Fun fact, voice of the Toonami guy is the voice of Spike Spiegel. I could see that. I can totally see that. Yeah, Steve Bloom. It was his first uh, voice acting gig, Cowboy Bebop, fun fact. He's like the Harrison Mm -hmm. Ford of voice actors. He was just like a carpenter in the voice recording booth and they were like, hey, you say some stuff. And he said, okay. Interesting. Uh, he wasn't actually a carpenter that was just stealing from the Harrison Ford thing. Um, but I got Ford really a carpenter. Yeah, on I just like knew set, he flew airplanes. I think I didn't so. know that. Yeah, he's Jesus, cool. man. Huh? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I I started this watching summer, some more anime. Harrison Ford is Harrison, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Air Force One, two. Air, Jesus Christ. What? Why um, does it have to be an Air Force One sequel? <laughs> It could just be a standalone project. So he can fly a plane. We gotta give him a reason. Um, Michael Bay presents <laughs> The Bible. <laughs> Starring Megan Fox as God. <laughs> but because God made us in their image, every person in the movie is also Megan Fox. I like that you use they, them... Uh, Thank you. Uh, pronounced for for our Lord and Savior. Well, you know, if we're if we're running with the Megan thing, 
Okay, so back Thanks. to anime. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I started no, watching no. a bunch during the pandemic, basically. Oh, okay. and, and now I have enough money to buy merch and shirts, and it became a lot cooler to do Could that spend in it on, like, black culture. Uh, that is that is a big thing. I have noticed that, that a lot of my black friends on Facebook, especially in our age group, mm-hmm. are real big anime kids. I, and from my perspective, like back in high school, it was definitely... It felt like a different, at least from my viewpoint, yeah. it felt like a different demographic that was into it. It was like the totally. the kids that hung out at the public library. It was people yeah. like, like like Lily or yeah. like often, um, not including Lily, but it was often like uh, kind of the outsider girls that were really into anime. Totally. Um, yeah. So was that a recent shift or was that always kind of I thing think that, that, was that started on? to happen um... – with the kind of black nerd culture growth that's gone on sure. since the superhero movies have been coming out, since sure. people like uh, Michael B. Jordan, uh, Childish Gambino, things like that, that sure. make it a little more cool to be a nerdy black guy. That's and we awesome. can be a little more in touch in public with that side of that's ourselves. Really cool. I think it came out that a lot of us have been watching anime Your whole you know, life. for a long time. And I of think course. it's also opened the door to especially black men mm-hmm. being more comfortable watching genres of anime that aren't just action. Which is cool to see. Interesting. That is really, mm-hmm. really cool. Wow. Yeah. Growth. I know. It's like it's crazy. I think the and pandemic that, had a big part to do with that, but the pandemic, sure. But that a specific medium of television that's culture from another country can like mm-hmm. do things like that and much more than just that, but yeah. can do things like that for a totally different culture is really cool. It's totally cool. So what are, like, the touchstones of anime for you? I know that you watch dozens and dozens of shows, but what are, like, the, I don't know, not, maybe the Mount Rushmore? What's, like, the Mount sure. Rushmore of anime for you? Um, so just to flex for a little bit, on, like, my, my anime list, which is kind of like TV time I've told you about, and I have completed... for anyone who doesn't know either of those, yeah. TV time and my anime list are great resources for tracking uh television that you're watching sharing it with yeah. friends that you're watching it commenting on it seeing other people that are commenting on it it's kind of like letterbox kind of like a water cooler converse i, I can't yeah. speak for my anime list but do you like talk with other users of the site you can there's yeah. like discussion boards and all sorts of things it has like a crazy big da- database yeah. of like as soon as an anime is announced it, it's there and you can it, like put it in your plan to watch list if you're a huge media consumer tv time and my anime list are both yeah, really essential pieces of because I watch so many TV shows and I'd have no idea uh, what I was watching. Like shows I watch mm-hmm. that are on for ten episodes and are off for like a year and a half. I would never know when they come back. Yeah, um, shows that I leave and come back to, I wouldn't remember where I was. It's really helpful. Well, and I like TV time a lot because I'm I like love like I wish it was stats. Right? Oh my God! Please sponsor us. Uh, yeah. But I love being able to track like what episode I'm on. Mm-hmm. Like especially if I'm watching across like this different is a perfect mediums. Perfect ad things. read right here. Yeah, it's great. It's bias. Oh, but so little flex. I have completed 209 entries in my anime list. Wow. Um, so that's a lot of shows. Now some of those are like multiple seasons or categorized different because of different reasons. But um, it's like a lot of shows. Um, my all-time favorite anime is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Okay. Um, I have a tattoo. Now is it. that I know Full Metal Alchemist, or there's several series, and that's the so series Full Metal Alchemist um, was the show that came out first, yeah, and it followed the manga story until a certain point when it caught up with the manga, and so yeah. there's an anime original kind of direction it goes on. Um, years later, they came out with Brotherhood, uh, with better animation, say a lot of the same team behind it, but mm. it was just better, um, and it follows the anime story more. So Brotherhood is the one that's pretty collectively viewed as better. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, It's great. So, so good. Awesome story. It's dark. It was probably one of the anime that made me get really, really, really into it at an Mm -hmm. older age. Um, Because I only watched it a few, like, a couple years ago. And that's the all-timer. That's your all-timer. That's my all-time number one. Okay. Um, Other, like, really popular ones, obviously, like Dragon Ball Z and stuff. But if you're looking for, like, a newer one to get into that's really good, I'd say uh, Mob Psycho 100 is really Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. That one is, like, exciting. That one, like, I watched alongside my brother, like, from even though we're not in the same place. Um, It's really good because it's a really cool brother relationship. My Hero Academia is really popular. But if I were going to make, like, a Mount Rushmore, so that'd be four that, like... Mm -hmm. I'll I'll try and do one from different genres. Okay. So I would say, for me personally, I'd do... Damn, it's damn near my top five. Uh, Okay, so I would go... 
Full Metal Aquas Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Neon Genesis Evangelion. Okay. I'm going to do five. Uh, <laughs> Konosuba, which is like it's always sunny if it were an anime. You that one to me. Okay. Yeah, that one's fantastic. Um, for like a romantic comedy slash slice of life, Kaguya-sama, Love is War is awesome. Okay. Um, and if you want just like a drama that's like beautiful, Violet Evergarden, I'm rewatching it right now with Danny, and it's it's amazing. It's so beautiful. Um, it's like, yeah, it really does a really good job of painting a lot of the issues that veterans have when they come home from like war, but also mm-hmm. like how PTSD. And oh, you've described that affected. to me yeah. recently. That does yeah. sound interesting. That one, I would, I would honestly put that up there. Well, it's then great. let's transition a little bit into the project that brings us to this new venture. How does Cowboy Bebop fit into your anime story? When did you first get turned on to it? So I had seen a couple episodes of Cowboy Bebop when I was like younger on like Adult Swim. I sure um, remember now I was when I would put on Adult Swim, I was looking for like Family Guy. And mm. a lot of times the anime and Cowboy Bebop to an extent, even watching it now, they come off kind of slower paced. Yeah. So I think certainly. when I was a kid, I turned it off when it came on. But I definitely remember flipping through it and just for like a, a, a glimmer of a second being a little transfixed on it even yeah. if i knew like it was above my consciousness at sure it was at that point okay go ahead yeah and i didn't remember very much from it i remembered ein i remembered spike a little bit and i remembered mm-hmm. like f- the Faye, who's the female main character um of the we show haven't met a yet. little bit yeah and um like i remembered what they looked like and i was familiar with it existing but i decided I mean, early on in the pandemic when I was just watching a bunch of anime that like either I didn't remember all the way or that I had wanted to watch. And that's one that I watched through, I think, in like a few days. I got through all the episodes just watching them late at night. And I was just transfi- like I was just like mystified. I loved yeah. it so much. The fact that you could have a, um, an action fight with like bruce lee choreography Hmm. with like jazz going behind it Hmm. like that blew my mind that those things could like exist at the same time and for me who like studied jazz in school and like that's always been like my like my thing Hmm. when i was a trumpet player um it was like perfect for me and i just loved it i was obsessed with it um a lot of the same team behind this went on to make samurai shampoo afterwards which is samurai fights and hip-hop and they had like oh cool just as good you know in a lot of respects um, kind of spiritual successor to this. And so I think that kind of made me appreciate Cowboy Bebop even more. And when I've gone back and watched it in um, English and then, you know, watched the movie afterwards, which is great, and just rewatching it over and over, I, have a question. I appreciate is there, more things. When I was Googling the show today, is there just the one movie or are there other little offshoots too? Because I would I'm say canon, for- there's one movie. Because I'm and thinking just for prosperity's sake, we should probably cover just about all of it if yeah. we can. I would say the what movie in the what show do you mean, or about it. Uh, like, how did you say that? That there's just one movie, but there's more, right? I think they what? there are like OVA or OVAs, which are what like extra mean? little things, like side stories. Okay, is what I'd call them. Um, but it's really just like. They like a holiday special, I think. That's fun. But that's like the only well, we really thing I can think of. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. I haven't so seen it. The plan is to cover all of it, starting with the 26 episodes of the show. Yeah. Uh, there's the film, which maybe we'll split up into two podcasts or something. Mm-hmm. And the we've got to at least take a look at the recent revival on yeah. Netflix that, from all accounts I've seen, was kind of a disaster. I think, because I, I didn't see all the episodes, but I saw the first few. I think there was some Potential. issues with the script, issues with the directing, issues with the performance of so one all actor of in particular. Just all of it. But I think it was campy. It was fun. It captured a lot of the like whimsy of the show okay. in a really cool way. It was just super duper stylized, and that's really off-putting to a lot of people. Okay. I didn't hate it. But I don't you think also didn't watch great. all of it. I didn't finish it. You no. didn't get hooked enough to keep going. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's dive in. John We're Cho gonna... was great. What was? And the guy that John Cho. Oh yeah, was great I like John Cho as Spike. Quite a bit. And um, even though he's a little bit older, but I, I mean Spike is supposed to be a little bit older in the show. Honestly, it's a little um, vague, at least so far. 
You've seen, you know nothing, Zach. Have you bathed in the in the suit? I know I don't know, but based off of like the look of the character, he doesn't exactly yeah, look like a but he's not super kid. young. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the guy who plays Jet is a gorgeous, handsome man, and mm-hmm. he did a great job. Well, let's Even talk they made about Jet's it. Character kind of let's a joke, dive kind of into this week's episode, the first episode of Cowboy Bebop. It's called Asteroid Blues, the first session of Cowboy Bebop, yeah. I say. Yeah, so all the it's episodes are, are broken down into sessions. So a little bit about the show, Zach. I don't know yeah. if you know the. Um, obviously, it has a great opening uh, sequence that we'll talk about. But in the background of that, there's a lot of like words that are written. Yeah, there. I didn't read it, but the by the time I watched the next episode that we're going to talk about, mm-hmm. I started to pick up on some of the words that were in it that described yeah. a little bit about like where in time they are yeah and why i didn't i didn't read it to a t so i don't know well, all a lot of, of it is is it's basically the pitch for the show it's the creator awesome. saying what the show is and they're like it's a show that works like jazz essentially because the one whole... thing i noted about it talking about the first episode is that the show does kind of drop you right into it it doesn't mm-hmm. take a lot of time to explain why what's happening is happening yeah like the rules of the world as it stands. So that's interesting that it's all in the opening titles. It is. And it's, and it's, it's all the characters have lived lives before the show. They live lives during the show. They'll, you know, live lives after the show. Like it's, it's mm-hmm. kind of, they're, they're already existing in this world. It's kind of like a they're movie. not starting from scratch. Yeah. And it's episodic, each episode but... is, is supposed to represent like a, a jazz chart basically. And right. So each episode is a different take on that chart. Because a jazz standard, you can play 50 different ways, but it's still the same song. And so that's kind of the idea behind the show. Are you able to explain to me then how this first episode relates to a specific thing in jazz? Or if each episode is supposed to represent a different thing? Do you know much about it? It's not supposed to represent a different thing. It's kind of like a jazz song. Like it starts, there's the setup that you always know that you recognize the tune. Then there's an improv solo where somebody mm-hmm. can do something different. Then it goes back to the recognizable okay. part. Then, you know, the this, this, this. But it always wraps up, um, you know, that's the end of the song. And then you move on to the next chart. Yeah. Okay, so this first episode, it was storyboarded by Shinichiro Watanabe. I'm going to butcher these names. Tell it's me okay. if you know any of these names or, like, their work. Is that a name that stands out? Um, Shinichiro Watanabe. Yeah, he's the he's the director. So he went on to also make Samurai Champloo. He well, he directed, didn't direct this episode. Uh, he direct, he's the director of the show though, like in general. Okay, like the showrunner. Yeah, and and did a lot of the script. Well, this episode was directed by someone named Yoshiyuki Takai. Takai. Mm. Is that a name that you know? Not off the top of my head. Yeah, and it was written by who you've mentioned a little bit. Who I believe is the creator. Is her name Kiko? How do you do? You know how to say it? Keiko. That, this episode was written by Keiko Nobumoto. Uh, e- yes. Is She's that the, the creator? One who just passed away. Uh, she did the script a lot for Bebop, Space Dandy, like Wolf's Rain, okay. Tokyo Godfathers, which is a really popular movie. Okay, and as far as the air dates, uh, I on Wikipedia it said that the original TV Tokyo air date is unknown. Mm-hmm. But the original, what's it called? Wow, 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 Wow air date. It's another nice. network in Japan, I believe. It was October 24th, 1998. Uh, I was not two years old yet when this when this first episode aired in Japan. Yeah, we were we were but but small babes. And it originally aired on Adult Swim on September 3rd, 2001. Nice. Just a full eight days before that 9-11. <laughs> What a way to bring in yes. <laughs> history. Okay, so let's You think dive everyone in. was like, did you hear about that new anime? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they were talking about it at the water cooler. Shit. <laughs> um, so this first episode, let's dive in. We said we were going to do trivia for it. I was just watching the episode. I didn't write down any trivia. Did you? Okay, I have a couple questions for you. I meant to. I just was watching the episode. No, I had one, I and then I had it. to just, like, remember something for Okay, a sure. One. Well, well, let's see if I can pick up what you're putting down. I doubt it. Okay, uh, what what did the shaman call Spike? What was his nickname? Oh. Oh, f- Something bird. Swimming yeah. bird. Swimming bird, oh, yeah! yeah. Nice. Let's okay. go, Zach. Okay. Uh, and how much was Ashima's bounty? 
Oh, was it 2.5 million, whatever yeah. the currency is? Yeah, Wulongs. And is that a lot? Is that a little? Um, That would be, so just equate Wulongs to yen, yeah. which... How about um, to the dollars that I'm familiar with? Yeah, so then the, to get from yen to dollars, you basically just divide it by... Oh, now we're doing math. ...$100. So it would be like $250,000. That's a decent amount of money. Yeah. All right, well, we've spent a lot of time doing the build Oh, no, so $25,000. Let's do what we can to kind of talk <laughs> through the episode without... We're not going to do it. Right? You can't disappoint a podcast yeah. style. We're just going to have kind of a free-flowing discussion. Tell me... What? Because so far we we've I've watched the first two episodes to discuss. So mm-hmm. far the episodes are pretty episodic and kind of like one off storylines. Of oh wait, do you want me to do the thing? Yeah, are we gonna do I the do. thing? We well, are. That's so we're we're gonna do a segment here that I could not be more excited for. Sure. Um, we're gonna find out because Zach, you're not the 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 big. I wouldn't call you an anime expert by no. any means. Absolutely. And I just want to know novice, by all means. Did Zach? Comprehend the episode this week. I guess we'll find out. Are you gonna grade me? Yeah, I'm gonna grade you, and I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna time you. You're gonna have twenty okay. seconds. Okay. 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 Are you ready? How okay. you feeling? Um, I was kind of thinking about it. I feel mm-hmm. okay. I feel okay. I don't. Mm-hmm. I've never done this before, so I don't yeah. know how much the time. The pressure. To, how I don't know how fast the twenty seconds is going to go, and if what I have in my head is going to fill up the time or not. Some days it's fast. Sometimes it's it's yeah. it's long. You know, it's I'll usually give you pretty a, quick. Yeah. It's usually all right, Zach. Quick. All right. We're going to get started in three. <laughs> Are you going to go on go? That's up to you. You're I'm going to press the timer on. Don't go. ask me. Okay. 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 Three, two. Usually, usually, <laughs> you, usually you would go on go. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, go. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so we're in the distant future, and there are uh, a bounty hunter named Spike is living on the ship Bebop, where they traverse the galaxy looking for uh, bad guys. In this journey, they're looking for a guy, I don't remember his name, who is traveling and s- distributing this drug called Bloody Eye along with a pregnant lady. After several near and stop. misses. Oh, damn. I didn't Yeah, it. it goes yeah, fast. It goes by really no, here's fast. what I'll say you did a beautiful intro, beautiful okay. opening. Took took a lot of your time, about half, yeah. but it was it yeah. was lovely. Good job talking about time, Spike. I think faster. you set up Spike fantastically. I didn't get anything about Jet really. Sure, but um, I, we don't get a lot about him. I, that's I, I fair. Wasn't worried about him. But he's there. He makes yeah, the peppers. Um, you didn't give me that she wasn't really pregnant. That it was the drug. Didn't. Yeah, get but I didn't about get the to syndicate. the end. Yeah. I didn't. I wasn't gonna say anything. Zach, about I'm syndicate. I'm grading you. I know. Just give me I know. A second. You you. I'm being you. You do this shit all the time. I don't know about that. Okay. I sit there quietly and take okay, it like okay. a good girl. Okay. Um, okay. But be a good whoa, <laughs> wow, cut that one. No, <laughs> that, it's keeping. It's fine. Okay. It's, I'm um, thinking since this is for the Patreon, it's going to be totally. It's going to be pretty good. Cool. Yeah, I'm not going to bleep stuff. Beep. Out, I don't think. Um, you can. I give you a good. solid C plus, Zach. That was well, your first fair. one. So yeah. I didn't finish. You got. You did a great job with the first, but you just didn't get to the end. Yeah. That was well, good, Zach. I, the point that I wanted to make, and honestly, we don't have a ton of time to talk through the episode because of all the setup. We'll have yeah. more time to spend on each individual episode mm-hmm. in the future. Uh, is that the thing I wanted to get to? Is that although they're these bounty hunters and this is like their lifeblood, and they're going across the galaxy, it it seems like they've got spunk, but they're not that good at it. Yeah, they don't catch the guy. Yeah. And the first I, time I watched it, I was like, but wait, they didn't really do anything. Sure, I they don't, have a couple no. <laughs> fights. They track down the guy. But then the not pregnant lady kills him. And then yeah. the syndicate blows up the ship. And they just happen to be there to see it happen. Mm-hmm. Are they supposed to be good? Or is that kind of Well, like here's what I'll say. I don't know that they expressly say how long that they've been bounty hunters. But uh-huh. they both had lives before this. And this sure. is kind of their what they're doing now they jet and spike have not known each other for super long um and they've been bounty hunters about that time so just kind of uh uh people in search of money they're they're just like moving on to the next yeah they both had careers that i'm not going to spoil for you um because they're pretty relevant one thing the live action did so wrong is it spoils everything about the show in the first 10 minutes wow Because they're like, well, we have to give them this information because they won't know. And I'm like, that's the point. Wow. Uh, but you'll find out their occupation, what they did before. Okay. Um, but this is kind of new to both of them. They both have a lot of skills, 
but skills that they haven't necessarily figured out how to translate okay. to bounty hunting. Well, I just thought there is a sense of humor to the show. Let's, let's yeah. just try to talk about it. I enjoyed it more the second time we watched it. The first time I was a little off put by how like I like that it doesn't tell me everything, mm -hmm. but I also didn't feel a ton of intrigue. It felt like it kind sure. of reminded me of an episode of like The Mandalorian, even though this is way before it, that mm -hmm. it is just this like one off story and a decent one off story. But when it was done, it was the preview for the next episode that made me feel like I needed to watch the next episode. Not yeah. so much like I was like, whoa, that's a really cool concept. What's going to happen in the next one? You know what well, I mean? Yeah. I did like that the show has a little bit of a sense of humor. That was one of the things mm -hmm. that I enjoyed about it the first run. And I kind of thought that it's funny that the episode is them tracking down this bad guy, and they do, but they're really just bystanders in what happens mm -hmm. for the most part. I thought that was kind of funny. No, totally. I think that the show, I would describe it as an action comedy, like if I were telling somebody about it. Even though so there, it is there are a lot of comedy. dramatic... Yeah, it's sure. supposed to be really I funny. I look forward to that. Um, and I think that it is kind of campy, even at mm -hmm. some point, especially when you get to know the characters more. Um, one thing I love about this first episode is that it is kind of like a standalone, like this almost plays like a movie, whereas yeah, like you said, you're does. kind of just dropped in to this already lived in and existing world. The earth has hundreds of years of history that we don't know anything the about. The world's really well realized, even though it's yeah. in the background. And it's really, it's cool how they, you know, take these characters that we don't really know. And we don't get a lot of jet in the first episode. We get a lot more jet in the next few episodes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Spike is who we kind of focus on, and he we don't know a lot about him. He's this mysterious yeah. guy. We know he can fight, and we know he it's like kind of is a bit smug. Yeah, and kind he of likes ass. the food. He does He's like food. Boy. He's a hungry boy. Yeah, he wants some meat with those peppers. Yeah, don't we all? I yeah, want to talk I, about the drug that this episode presents. Okay, the yeah, the the bloody that, eye. Yeah, they're the chasing after this guy who is distributing this drug like all over the place. And well, he's trying to. Yeah, it, but it's like sought after, and it's mm -hmm. really pure, and it takes a long time to make, and he's got like the stuff. Yeah, and he, he has all of it. Stole it from a crime syndicate he was a part of. That yeah, he, like betrayed and killed a bunch of them, and he, took like, all the shit and left. Yeah, he and stole it left. So he's this lady that. who's pretending to be pregnant to carry it all around. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to talk about the drug specifically because it seems like a nightmare. Yeah. They're like these little vials of liquid, and <laughs> he points it towards his eye, and there's what looks like a needle. I thought he was going to poke the needle in his yeah. eye at first, but it spritzes the eye. Then his mm -hmm. pupil, his, not just his pupil, his whole, like, not white part of his eye gets small, and then it all turns red, and then everything he sees is red, and <laughs> he doesn't look like he's having a good time. No, no it's not fun, but he is quite a, a killing machine when he's on it. He, he can dodge bullets and... And is that what it's supposed to do? It's accuracy. supposed to make you more strong? Yeah, or? it's like a super soldier eye spray. I did like a couple of things that the episode, animation-wise, I really liked the shots. Even though the red eye was weird, I liked the shots where people were coming at him with the red eye. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty cool. The beginning of the episode, an animation moment I liked a lot, was the water, the raindrops dropping on mm -hmm. the puddle. Uh, that's something I do want to bring up is the beginning of the episode. What was that? Is that just like kind of flash forward when it's the rose and it's the water? A, so that is a flashback. It's a flashback. That, yeah. it's um, That's one of the things that... You don't have to tell me what's no, going to no, happen. No. But. Yeah, but it, it's, it happens less frequently than in the first episode normally, but it does okay. happen every once in a while. Interesting. So it's just building intrigue of where the characters were before mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'm going to put the ball in your court. We'll go another five minutes or so. What are things from this first episode that you think need brought up? Things that even though it's episodic, what are the things that uh, that I need to have stick with me? As I we're think going the, the um, highlight animation wise for me is the fight choreography, specifically yeah. when they fight like around the tables and he's like in the yeah. poncho and stuff. That fight's really well done. That is kind of... The more, more so the style that the series yeah, continues with in the like fights. Yeah, I do like the first action sequence, the, like, shootout was silent. Yeah. And I was expecting just, like, like shiny uh, uh, music. And I know that's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of it, but it was cool that even in this first episode, that's yeah. not the only thing that they do. For a show that's known so much for its music, they Their really style. use silence well, and it's so yeah. cool. Um, I think the ending of the episode is, you know, it's cool. 
I it I was surprised by it the first time I watched it. I was when like, she kills oh, him. they're when dead. When the lady kills him. Yeah. Cause, so uh, let's talk about that lady character for a second. It, yeah. Is her, we don't learn a lot about her, but no. it does seem like she's kind of gotten dragged into this, into a yeah. relationship with this I think, guy and into the crime and that she, her heart's not really in it. Maybe it was a money thing. Uh, it was. She's know. trying to get, because she comes from a poor, another thing yeah. the show made weird, but um, the live action made weird, but she is supposed to come from like a poor background and she wants to get to Mars with all yes. this money they're going to make and she can live a life of luxury there. She's always dreamed about going. She probably hasn't like traveled much um, because she's low income. Earth yeah. in this reality is not a super nice place if you're That's still there. I, is that where we are in the episode? Are we on Earth? Um, yes. They're okay. in Tijuana, Mexico. Oh, right, right. They did say that. Yeah. So sometimes they're on Earth, sometimes they're in other places. Um, this takes place like a I want to say one or two hundred maybe years in the future, maybe less. I think about a hundred years at the time. Yeah. Is it? Um, I want to talk about that lady. Is it her conversation with Spike that they have that leads to her like having a change of heart? I think it was partially. She was thinking about what she said at that time, but I think that she was kind of on her way there anyway. Like yeah. she she knew she wanted to get to Mars, but then when she saw that that wasn't going to happen, she was like what's the point of this? Like, I, I'm going to die She's just in anyway. it to get out of her situation. Yeah, and when and she sees it, she's not going to. It kind of becomes a suicide mission at the end. Yeah, yeah she, absolutely. She When she chooses to kill Azakoff, is that his name? Asimov. Asimov. I was close. That was yeah, you close. were. Uh, I'm not because they're, like, flying towards names. the edge of the place, so, like, the police mm -hmm. are there at that point, and she's not going to... She would rather die than so just her, go to jail for this But shit. her choice to kill him, she already knows that they're both about to die, probably, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, but he's also on that red-eye stuff and has gotten out of situations where he killed a lot of people, so I think she figured she might as well just take him out and then assure that So she'd die. rather die than and stay with his crazy with ass. Yeah. Yeah. What else did I want to bring up? Or what she was probably worried they'd get arrested, maybe. Spike's involvement there, why are... What are they trying... They're just trying to catch him and bring him in for money? Spike's trying to catch Asimov and bring him in for right. money. Right. The police were after them because they were having, like, a whole ass, like, shootout. And, right. and they were flying, like, towards the edge of the border. So they weren't, like, leaving the atmosphere in a legal way. That's one thing I had trouble with a little bit with the, just putting us all into it was they, sure. the... Sure. The mentioning of the syndicate was very small. Yes. It was like if you... But... I picked up on the backstory, yeah. but... I didn't exactly know at first that that's what those guys were, sure. and I also didn't pick up that people were police either. I wasn't exactly sure who was what that was chasing yeah. after him. I uh, think the second time the it was more syndicate clear. definitely. So there are different. There are multiple syndicates in the show. Just it's a thing that's yeah. like in that world, and they operate more like gangs than like what we think of as like a fancy syndicate. Yeah, um, for the most part, but yeah, they just kind of looked like. Date regular old thugs after him, but that sure. was his his gang. I will say that the first episode does have enough intrigue to keep me interested, even being mm -hmm. kind of on the outside looking in on sure. anime. The animation was cool. It took some getting used to because I'm used to animation in the U.S. is very. I feel like it's very quick. Yeah, it uh, is. And the anime animation takes its time. The pacing of the story feels a little slower. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not to its own fault. It's just the way that I'm predisposed to animation being yeah. bright and colorful and loud and bam, it's bam, super, bam. super, comparatively, the colors are a lot less bright. Yeah, which in, I like, but it takes some getting used to. Especially this kind of anime. The, the 90s, especially the mid-90s, mid to late, like, put out a lot of shows that were colored like this. They were a little yeah. bit darker. They're not for, like, a young audience at all. I think that's yeah. part of the reason. Um, like, they are Another more reason adults. why I might have been transfixed but turned off from it yeah. when I was a kid flipping past it. Totally. Or why you, like, recognize bits and pieces of it but didn't quite mm -hmm. sit down to watch it all the time. Absolutely. Whereas, like, Dragon Ball, where he's in a bright orange suit with a monkey tail doing, like, laser beams, like yeah. that, I'm like, sure. Or, like, colorful, cute animal characters yeah. that fight each other. Exactly. Well, how should we wrap this thing up? What are some final thoughts on this episode? Uh, is this... Do you feel like the show gets a lot better as it goes on, or do you feel yeah. like the show shows up fully realized? I don't think there are any bad episodes of this show. I think there's a couple episodes that are not my favorites, but mm -hmm. everyone kind of has their own. And, and where would varies. you put this, the first episode? With this that? is in the lower half, Okay, but not because it's I don't enjoy it. I just like others a lot more. Just because it gets more. better. Yeah. 
I think this is like I always have a tough time with pilots of shows because Absolutely. they have to rope you in, so they have to kind of get the out of the you norm love a, a little TV bit. Show much, or at least I do, is because of the characters. Yeah, and it, in com- I usually watch comedies, but any show, the first episode, you're like, well, I I I get that it's people saying quick funny stuff, but like. I don't Why are they yet. funny? What are they yeah. like? What, uh, what? Yeah, and I'm still getting to that point. Although there is intrigue in Spike and Jet and the conver- mm-hmm. uh, the uh, relationship between the two of them and the yeah. banter between the two of them. Uh, but it, the cast feels very small. I know we haven't met several of the main characters mm-hmm. still. And even after next week's episode, we haven't met still all haven't, of the main yeah. characters yet. So I'm, and Which almost makes me sad because there's only 26 episodes. I know. It's it's really... I like that it's taking its time, but it's not like the first couple episodes of a 100-episode series. It's yeah. uh, a decent percentage of the story. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, let's wrap this up. Are we, we're not going to do an MVP-like community. What are we going to do, Steven? Well, why don't we, we, we say who the... Uh, do we want to call them our first mate? Our, our third mate? The ball's in your court. We can call it whatever you want, Daddy. Let's... <laughs> Who's our, our baby carnita today? Oh, God. <laughs> who who put the pork in our carnita? Okay, so I guess it is kind of an MVP. I don't I don't know if that uh, carnita is the best way to describe it. I like what you yeah. said earlier. We're talking about our, like, captain of the week or yeah, something. Yeah, our captain of the bebop. Yeah, sure. We'll, who we'll gets to that. sit in the captain's chair this week? I think for me, uh, off of this first episode, the captain chair is going to be split three or four ways between the old guys. Who are yeah, three-way the tie bar. for the old men. I will spoil this for you, Zach. They are Continue they stick to show around. up. Yeah, cool. they're always they're always in the background. They and they're were always funny, so f- have funny. Have this good cantankerous old guy demeanor between each other, and they look f-ed up. Yeah, <laughs> they're like well, they said they they and... they worked hard to dig that gate yeah. <laughs> and to plow those fields. Yeah, yeah, That's they're it. hilarious. We did it. What was that yours too? Because yeah, you were, yeah, the old guy absolutely. Yeah, they were funny. They were a good... Like, it'd be easy to give it to, like, Spike because he's the main character, but those were the other characters that kind of stood, out, stood to out as being yeah, funny. Yeah, they get to sit yeah. in the captain's chair. Cool. All well, stacked on top fun. of each other. This was a first episode, so it was really heavy-handed. You know, we didn't quite get to touch on everything, but yeah. I like what we did touch on, and I, I, I really like to touch on what we touched on. hey yo. And next week... We'll dive right into episode two at the top of the show, so we'll we'll real go in depth with it. Burr, 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 burr. Talking about some corgis, corgi butts. There's also so I, an afro in this episode. That's true. There is, mm-hmm. but no spoilers. What, what are we going to talk about <laughs> next week? We've mentioned the corgi and the afro. That's the whole episode. I had a good time talking about this. Thank you guys for being a patron. Whether you have always been a patron or are joining to check out this new show, we're going to be bringing you a new episode of this, talking all the way through. The 26 Cowboy Bebops every week. We'll see you next week with the next episode. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Why don't you sign this thing off? How do you want to take the people out? Uh. <laughs> oh, I can't say that one yet. Um. See ya, space cowgirl. <laughs> Well, that sure was fun. I feel good getting that off my chest and out to where our uh, less loyal fans can can get a little taste of it and and maybe feel the urge to sign up for the Patreon. Uh, you've just heard episode one of Brokeback Bebop. You're about to hear episode three. So if you're playing along at home and you need to pause here, go watch episodes two and three of Cowboy Bebop for the first time. Go ahead and do that. And also, it's a great little opportunity to pull out that piggy bank Count your nickels and bottle caps and trade Ooh. in those bazooka bubblegum wrappers for a spare change to sign up for our Patreon over at patreon.com slash podcast. Steven, what do you, in your personal opinion, think is the best thing that we do on Patreon? Is it Brokeback Bebop or is um, it the I'm really or? partial to Brokeback Bebop, but well, I also think it's very entertaining us to watch us, very entertaining to watch us play bombs or Overcooked yeah. and with our respective issues in each game that we all bring to the table. And I think it's fun to, to watch our growth, you know, to watch our journey of, of uh, chefs or sure. bomb diffusers, you know? And, and, I, and, that's I, and, about and it. I think, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those are the two jobs that you have in those games. Well, 
here I'll say for those of you listening that have never uh, pushed over to the Patreon, people that watch the pre-show as it happens live do have a direct line of communication with us. It's It'd true. be a great opportunity if any of you guys have like non-community episode specific questions or criticisms mm-hmm. that you'd like to hurdle towards us. Once you get past the paywall, we'll tell you just yeah. about anything right to your face. It's true. Okay, so pause, do all that, go watch Cowboy Bebop. We're about to bring up the third episode of Brokeback Bebop. I forget what the third episode's called. Is the third one Honky Tonk Women? Uh, no. That's the fourth one. The, the th- third one is the Sea Rat one, right? Oh, okay. I forget what it's called. Are you looking uh, it up? The third one is Honky Tonk Women. You're right. All right, so let's get on in to the third oh, episode. Oh, shoot. Is the fourth one the Sea Rats? And the third yeah. one is the... The casino. Yeah. The third nice. episode. We meet one Faye Valentine. We get... Uh, this is why I wanted to choose this one, because we get into some uh, assorted conversations about the the sexy anime girl idea. Yeah, we and, do. And uh, the, the bounce factor. I don't know. I think we should just get into <laughs> it. Let's do it. Episode three, Brokeback Bebop. That's crazy. They said you couldn't do it. You can't give them two free Patreon episodes in one week. And I said... That shit. I'm not claiming that. The, they get two. They get two. They get two. And here it is. It takes is. two to make a thing go right. Yeah. And here it is. Our, the, the stew, the cosmic gumbo that is the third episode of Brokeback Bebop. Honky tonk, but donk a donk, Zach. Let's get into it. I think it's time to blow this thing. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay. Three, two, one. Let's jam. Jesus. Come on, come on, big money, big money. Mama needs a new pair of undies. Oh yeah, <laughs> new slippies on my toes. Come on, big money, no whammies, no whammies. Hi everybody, welcome to Brokeback Bebop. I almost said You Can't Disappoint a Podcast. Nice. Uh, it's brought to you by You Can't Disappoint a Podcast on Patreon, so thank you for being a patron and being here to to go through the, the world of Cowboy Bebop with us. We're back for third episode, everyone. I'm Zach. I'm Steven. And welcome to the show. Steven, how are you doing, man? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be talking about this show. Happy to... Uh... I just totally unplugged my headphones. I can't hear shit you're saying. Nice. Vamp. Vamp for me. Yeah. We don't uh... edit shit out of this one. Vamp for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you do when you're at a casino and a woman in an impossible set of clothing walks in? You have an adventure. All right. Well, welcome to the program, everyone. We've glad. Wait, I almost said we've glad you made it. We've mm-hmm. glad you made it. Uh, thanks for being a patron. <laughs> I hope you're watching through this show with us. I think that'd be cool to yeah. have other people going through it with us. Uh, I asked how you were doing. What's new in your life? You got anything cool going on um, at this hour? I don't know. Yeah. Just the same old, same yeah. shit. Different day. What type of dancing have you been doing the most recently? Um, lately, let's see. I have uh, been teaching a lot of bachata, waltz, horchata. Um, I'm not familiar. Almost. Isn't that like uh, a rice and milk drink? Yeah. And what you is that? Pour it over no. What, and what was around. it called? Pachata. Bachata with bachata. a B. Bachata. What is it? Yeah. It's actually my favorite dance. It's a Latin dance. I think uh, I've really heard you say that socially. before. Yeah. But it's, what is it? Um. <laughs> Give me a little taste. Give me a little taste. Let's see it. I got gotcha. you. I'll hit you with it right here. So it's a lot of it's a lot of hips and tips. It is. You can you can roll with it. All sorts of things. It's hard to. Ex- it doesn't look like you're doing much, but humping the air from this. Yeah. Perspective. No. No. That's it. So it's a very, like, you and I are having sex now type dance. Yeah, it can be. It's also the dance I do with my grandma, though, so it really has a wide spectrum. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you know what, Steven? That's a perfect segue. You know what I had the thought the other day? Uh, I know I am often uh, often our banter back and forth is quite rude, 
but mm-hmm. I feel like it's time for me to throw some uh, some some kudos and admiration your way. Wow. Uh, I am very thankful for what we have built with this little thing here together. And yeah. I'm very grateful and and uh, don't think that I don't notice all that you bring to it. You bring a lot to it. And I'm still glad all the time that I get to do this with you. And wow, even though buddy. we totally, especially now, like a year and a half in, we totally like go through the motions kind of. We totally like, I think we jab at each other a little bit more mm-hmm. than we might have when we started. But none of that sure. shit matters. I love doing this and I love doing it with you. Yeah, it's so much fun. I love it, buddy. Thank Yay. you for all that you do for the show as well. Thanks. We would have never secured that's what that I was, loan with that's my That's what I was ass. milking for. Could you take that a little further? What else? Uh, could you, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, what was, exactly do you like that this, I do? Yeah, yeah, what exactly about me? <laughs> Tell me I'm special. That, all, that was all uh, for you to say good stuff about me. Let's move sure. into what we're talking about. Before we get into the episode, I want to bring up the, the concept of casinos and gambling for a moment. Uh, we're we're men of 24 and 25, so mm-hmm. so being able to go to a casino is something new for us. I still have never stepped foot in a casino. Have you been to a casino? I have. Whenever I compete in Vegas, the competition oh, I guess is held that's at true. a I casino. That. So I've been to a lot of the Vegas casinos. I went like, more last What are some time. of the biggest ones, some of the big ones that you went to? Um, that I might know the Bellagio. Name. That's I exactly the what I was thinking. Bellagio my, is the first I love name the that came to mind. The fountain in the Bellagio is like my Describe favorite the thing fountain in all of for Las me. Vegas. I'm sure I've seen it in movies. It's like the really huge one that they play at the end of like Ocean's Eleven always with like okay. the whole like fountain show, and they sure, always play a song sure. with it, and then they like time it like to the song. It's really cool. I cried the first time I saw it. It was beautiful. I'm pretty sure it was <laughs> My Heart Will Go On was playing, and it really got me. That's okay. I didn't do it on our trip, but I. For the life of me, and I never know why, every time that Lily and I have gone to, like, Universal or Disney World mm-hmm. or something, as we're leaving, I, like, get a little misty-eyed the last day. Not uh-huh. in, like, a I want to stay kind of way, but I'm just, like, taking it all in, like, the last moments, and I get, like, a little misty-eyed. I, don't I know cried why. during stupid. the Avatar ride. Oh, sure. I get that. I don't know <laughs> if I, I... I think you told me that. I definitely didn't see you cry. Yeah, I literally cried. I was, like... I'm there. Yeah. Well, um, back to casinos. Tell casinos. Me, like, so Bellagio's do do? really cool. Do I you... stayed at Caesars, which was really cool. Well, I want to ask, because I know that you're a media guy as much as I am, mm-hmm. and in Vegas, and casinos in general, because they kind of give you that vibe of Vegas, but Vegas especially, do you go in like, I don't know, like a character like Spike does mm-hmm. in where you feel like the center of it, and you're like, I've got to go do... A roulette, and I've got to do like the table games. Here's what I'll say: um, Vegas is expensive if you want to play table games. Yeah, I have played one. What did I do? It wasn't roulette? I like played. I'm one sure it's incredibly bet expensive. Of like blackjack one time, the first time I went, and it was like ten dollar minimum. And I okay. was, like, especially broke at that time. And I was like, well, no you thanks. You weren't going there to gamble. You were there yeah. for work. And, you and, had to- and last time when I went, I was like, well, I'd rather spend money on doing things with Danny and, like, drinks and stuff. And she's not a big gambler. And I like I, – I consider myself pretty good at, like, Texas Hold'em. I, like, have played – I like the roulette machines. Those are fun. When I was there one time, I spent, like, an hour and a half at a roulette machine, and that was fun. I, like, put in $20, and I think I left with, like, $20. I just, like, kept playing. Because I always just play till I lose whatever money I have, because that's what's fun for me, not yeah. actually, like, trying to win something. Yeah. I just like pressing the button and watching the pretty lights, so. That's what I've said to Lily, because neither of us have been at all, like, ever. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we should go once to go, and yeah. we should, like, plan it as an evening and maybe take, like... Ooh, big money, like two hundred dollars or something. Yeah, and just like plan to spend it on entertainment. And then, like once we've played two hundred dollars worth, we'll leave with either what we have or don't have. Mm-hmm. That's a great but idea. I'm sure that's easier said than done. Is it really at all casinos that like the drinks are free flowing? Um, kind of. Yeah, if you're sitting and that playing. Mean? Well, yeah. if you're like so sitting if you're and just playing like at, at a table thing. or like walking around, they don't bring you more drinks. But if well, you're sitting at a game, I mean, kind of. table, I mean like hanging out, not at a table game. Well, if you're at a thing and you like, or they like ask you want a drink, and they'll bring you as many drinks as you want for free as long as you're gambling. Yeah. But you're also like, it's rude to not tip the person. So. Well, sure, that yeah. makes sense. I never do it because I feel like I don't know. 
I'm never going to be at one machine long enough to do that. But yeah, but it not is even a thing. like while you're playing your game, if they come up to you and like, would you like a drink? You won't. You don't get to the first drink moment. No. Interesting. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's move into it. We're talking about episode three. You want to say cool about casinos, though, Zach? <laughs> yeah, I do. That that you'll find cool just because of the. Um, I know we both are very aware of the attractive nature of smoking a cigarette, especially mm. in like media and how it's portrayed and things like that. Mm. You can smoke in Vegas casinos, and that's like the only place you can smoke inside that I ever encounter. Well, and here you can smoke inside bars. Oh, really? I yeah. don't think you can in Chicago anymore. Not every bar. I think it's kind of up to the bar, but there are at least sure. two or three. Like the bar that Lily and I, we don't go to a bar very often, but the bar that we do go to, you can smoke there. Wow. Well, never mind. But there aren't many places. It feel like it feels like that when we go to those bars. And I don't smoke cigarettes. But well, like, and here's I've something about Vegas casinos: people pretty freely smoke weed. But anyway, Cowboy <laughs> Bebop episode three is Honky Tonk bow Women, bow bow which is actually bow a bow bow translation bow 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 error because in, in Japanese it's Honky Tonk Woman because the mm-hmm. woman is Faye Valentine. But yeah. uh, in, in translation, it's Honky Tonk Women. This episode was storyboarded by Kazuki Akane. It was directed by Kunihiro Mori. And it was written by Ryota Yamaguchi. And how do you... Sp- the the woman who is always on this list. Kiko? Is it Kiko? Or what Ki- are the letters? K-E-I-K-O. Keiko. Keiko Nobumoto. In Japanese, you pronounce every vowel. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the episode originally aired in Japan on April 3rd, 1998, and in the U.S. on September 10th, 2001. September 10th, 2001. Wow. Oh, shit, yeah. 9-10. Nice. Uh, Let's get into some trivia before we get deep into things, even though we've already gotten pretty deep into it. I've got three questions that I wrote down for you. I've got one for you. Okay, I'll I'll give you two. Then okay. I'll just give you two. Everything's light and breezy here on Brokeback Bebop. It's okay. Mm-hmm. There's no expectations. What's on the man at the store's hat in the beginning of the episode? Man at the store. Mm. Like behind the counter. Is it a pop when, leaf? No, it's the sun. The sun. Uh, when Faye is like talking to the guy in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I didn't, oh, I didn't give get that. More. Yeah. Uh, what? Damn didn't it. get that. Damn it. Oh, it's okay. Should have got that. What does the man holding Faye captive call her in relation to cards? Oh, the, uh, is it Queen of Diamonds? Queen so of Hearts? close. It's Queen of It's Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And go ahead. Give me yours. Um, how much did Jet win on the slots? Yeah, that's my last question. So I'm glad that nice. <laughs> I let you go. Yeah. Uh, 200K at least. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Good round of trivia. Good times. Yeah. What do you think about this episode, Zach? It's your this turn a... to introduce a segment that you never know to do. To be fair, this is my first time removed from when we invented the segment for me to know to do it. Yeah, but you didn't do it then either. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, here we're going to come in. Uh, quick, we're, uh, now we're going to go to one of my favorite segments, uh, quickly becoming one of my favorite segments that we do here at Brokeback Bebop. Um we're going to find out, did Zachary <laughs> comprehend the episode this week? Let me get that pronunciation of my name one more time. Zachary. It's with an S, isn't it? It's Zachary. Sac- okay. Zachary. I like yeah. it. Mm-hmm. It's not an all the time thing. I don't want you to be calling me that all the time. No, but, but there's I do a time like and a place. It, and I do acknowledge it. Thank you. <sighs> I feel a How little. How you feeling? Yeah, you feeling good about this? You feel like you like? I kind comprehended of comprehended it. I've kind of Although... thought about what I'm gonna say. What? Based on a question you asked me while watching the episode, I don't know how well you comprehended it, Zach. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not sure. It was sure. just that one moment. It was just that one moment that you uh, said out loud. Sure. I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what I want to say, but okay. it's more a matter of how fast. And how not jumbled it's going to come mm-hmm. out. And I have a little bit of a, uh, I did really well last week. Yeah. So the pressure's on. The pressure is on. I feel like I've got to prove that I truly am 
better at everything than Steven. Yeah, well, dancing, I keep the bar laughably low. Romancing. What do you say? <laughs> I, I, I keep the bar laughably low. That's fair. That is fair. Um, so let me take a deep breath. <sighs> okay. Okay. Three. To, uh, going on go, obviously. I figured. Yeah. Three. Yeah, because I know two, how to host a segment. Okay. One. Okay. Go. Meet Faye Valentine, a badass who can scam the poker table and can also handle a gun. She is kidnapped, and she also has a chip on her shoulder by a, a man who takes her to a space casino and has her looking for a mysterious chip where she meets Jet and <laughs> Spike and becomes their latest target. Uh, meanwhile. Time. I didn't get to. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it I, uh, well, I, I yeah. will. I appreciate the the you know kind of tongue in cheek opening, Whatever. Whatever. but it took you like eleven seconds. Sure, <laughs> and you know you got some good stuff about Faye. Yeah, I didn't really get much about Jet and Spike being. Yeah, in the that's casino literally what I was gonna say next, that. and I took too long. Didn't get yeah. anything about the double cross. That's fair. Yeah, I think if I were just judging the first third of the episode sure you would have done great Zach. yeah but i didn't uh, i'm gonna have to give that one the opening was good but you missed like most of the a lot episode. of it sure uh that's why i said it's got to come out fast and not jumbled and it came yeah, out yeah i'm gonna give that jumbled. one a c minus zach that's okay mm -hmm. i don't feel discouraged because i knew no. what i was gonna say yeah if i had gotten it all out it would have been better sure so i feel fine well good I feel good. You know what, That's Steven? Okay. What did you think of the episode this week? Uh, I love this episode. Honky -tonk I woman. am a pretty big fan of any time we get to see the characters all together mm -hmm. because that's not an every episode thing. They kind of they live their own lives. They have their own lives before the bebop. They aren't always working in tandem. They sometimes no, they is, usually end up together. This is the first time that. Especially Jet was a little bit more a part of yeah. the, the main events, which I liked. Totally. I think I I really like Jet in this episode. Also, that goddamn suit that he has on is too fresh to death. Hmm. Yeah. I think it's always cool to see characters in different clothes. Yeah. And which I think is tough on the animators. It is very tough. So I appreciate the you know different outfits. We get to see some different stuff for Faye eventually, which is cool. Um, speaking of Faye's outfit, it is like humanly impossible. I. Hmm. So Danny mm -hmm. and I did like a Cowboy Bebop routine, um, not like last year. And did you and consider dressing similar to the characters? We and did. She we, was like, "There's no way you well, did we do it, or you thought costumes? about it." Well, we did do it. We did dress similar. Uh, I have to she go back up and see. Like I've seen the routine, rumper. but with no, no knowledge yeah. of Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, and I kind of wore like a spike shirt. I was gonna do like the jacket and everything, but it was too hot. I miss so you I saying, "What did she wear?" She wore like a yellow like romper. Oh um, yeah, I remember. But it's kind of hard to like have anything hold itself together the way that hers does i've seen cosplayers do it but it's sure. like it's hard to do that to have kind of dance and wear an outfit that only covers your nipples yeah yeah um I get it. but really cool costume design i think mm -hmm. faye is interesting because she checks a lot of the like stereotypical anime girl boxes and she's like okay, she's mm -hmm. attractive she's super great shape you know but she also is a little more real because faye isn't this like perfect mm -hmm hot character she's heavily flawed in a lot of ways which makes her kind of cool um but here's what yeah. i'd like to say i think i am pretty uncomfortable with the sexualization of cartoons not to mm. the point where i'm like put off by it and this show doesn't do it as heavy-handed as some others and i'm not yeah. saying like when cartoon characters have sex it really turns me off but like when cartoon characters are supposed to be sexy i think mm -hmm. it makes me uncomfortable However, there are enough other things about Faye that I find her pretty interesting that mm -hmm. she's got this chip on her shoulder, both like, I don't know. There's... Yeah, I heard it in your review, Zach. No, but did you notice how I said chip, <laughs> like 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 a poker chip? Uh, <laughs> oh! Yeah, there's a moment when she's like in the, wherever in the casino she's being like handcuffed by by the one dude mm -hmm. there the, it's just like a look on her face that i feel like says a lot of her just being like we see in the beginning that she's such a badass and that she can get out of any jam but here yeah. she is this like kind of damsel in distress against her will that like uh is really feeling unhappy with what she's put into i i, I did like the character more than i expected to going into the episode you know zach i didn't know you had this aversion to um your 
deep down feelings uh, mm-hmm. for 2D women. I I just feel like it's uh, I don't know it's just not real and it's it's weird to to because like what do you picture having sex with it? It's not real. It's a drawing. You know what, Zach? <laughs> I think we're done here. <laughs> and this brings up a question that I did want to ask you. We talked nobody about watches our Blast. drug usage on this week's episode <laughs> of Brokeback Bebop, so I'm just gonna lay it on you straight, okay? Mm-hmm. Have you ever <laughs> into a cartoon character? Absolutely. Oh Zach. no. Zach, <laughs> I have an actual hentai within arm's reach. <laughs> I figured that was going to be the answer, but I was so I not ready for the confidence this behind that. Right oh, next no. to my computer, where I do so all you're my say- work. So now you're telling me you've masturbated to that action figure. No, 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 no. I'm not into that. I think that'd be a little weird because it's <laughs> too close in proximity. It's too real. <laughs> Also, it's 3D, which loses all the effect for me. 2D or nothing. I don't think I don't think I'm especially. I don't know. I'm not here to kink shame anybody. I think whatever I think whatever you're into is whatever you're into, and that's cool. It's just a personal thing. I, I sure. have a, a gap with it, and it makes me a little uncomfy. Sure. <laughs> what else? No, can it's we talk it's about not the something episode? I do on a regular basis. I'll say, Stephen. Anymore. What are things but... you noticed from this week's episode that are Things we should hold on to for future weeks. Um, I think weeks. the music this week really, really stands out. Um, the songs that they use all really are varied. We get a little bit more like traditional jazz. It's kind of alluded to when uh, Jet references Charlie Parker early in the episode. So he yeah. has a dream about Charlie Parker. I know who Charlie I don't Parker know who is. the guy is that he's talking about. But you know um, who Charlie Parker is? Gaucho was the other name, maybe. No, no, or is no, that no. later? That's later. Gaucho is uh, Romney Gaucho. for. A, a bumpkin who doesn't know which way is up. Yeah, I didn't know that word. Uh, uh, I should have made that a trivia question. Charlie uh, Parker. But that yeah, would Charlie be Parker. unfair. Birdman. <laughs> uh, um, well, one of my favorite. You bands... Never watched my big fat Greek wedding or my big fat gypsy wedding on TLC. <laughs> I sure didn't. One of my favorite bands as of late, Sparks, has a really good song called "When I Kiss You." I hear Charlie Parker playing. Nice. Mm-hmm. I like Charlie Parker. I like a lot of the songs that were written. Um, inspired by Charlie Parker more than I probably like a lot of Charlie Parker's actual recordings himself. But he's Mm -hmm. one of the best saxophone players of all time. Um, Now, in terms of, like, other things in the episode that I think are important... (laughs) Yes. Oh, talking talking about the music. That's what I was doing. So they kind of vary a lot. We've had a lot of the more kind of, funny enough, honky-tonk type of music with uh, a lot of twang and harmonica used so far. So this is kind of getting into the more, like, actual bebop jazz music sure. which is really cool um the song that plays during the like big climactic fight scene is one of my favorites in like the whole series i think that one's really good um let's also, talk about that fight sequence for a second yeah since we're kind of having an amorphous conversation on it i like and don't like different I, and i never really said i did like this episode quite a bit um mm-hmm. i think the episode we talk about next week i liked even more uh and i might have liked this one I might have liked last week's uh, Iron Origin a hair better than this one, mm-hmm. but I like that this episode starts to build a little bit of serialization for the show sure. where I'm a little bit more intrigued because in the end of the episode, uh, my thought was, wait, obviously, I thought in the beginning this is the episode where Faye becomes a part of the group, and in the end, she gets away. So yeah. I was a little bit like, well, what's going to happen? This was the first episode of the show where I thought, what's going to happen? Because I know that she's a part of the group. I kind of like her character a little bit. Uh, and I want to see what happens next with her. But back to the fight sequence, I like and don't like some of the things that this episode does with the the laws of space mm-hmm. in the show. Uh, I like that this action sequence is different because instead of taking place on land or in ship, it's taking place like outside in outer space. Mm-hmm. Um, but a couple of things I thought spikes, I know it's spikes, a spacesuit that he walks around in near the end of the episode. I feel like the rules of that are kind of silly. How? It's very clearly has an on off gravity magnetization thing on his feet. Yeah, and I think that's silly. <laughs> Steven's like, what? It's better than a f***ing tether that we use now. Yeah, but at least, like, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that I just thought that was kind of silly. I'm sorry. I'm allowed to have opinions. 
Well, in what way is it silly, Zach? I, I, I'm, I'm missing the... The fact that... The fact that he can be out in space, he's not wearing anything that, like, propels him. He just mm-hmm. kind of Carrie Fisher, Last Jedi, like, force goes near yeah, another surface. Yeah, what's wrong with that? That's the best and part then of it all goes, Star Wars, buddy. Boop, and now he can walk <laughs> around outside in space, around on a spaceship just fine. Also... Wait, I could be wrong. Now I'm just going on a tangent. I wasn't paying this close attention. They're having a fight on a ship outside in space. Are the other characters wearing those suits? I don't think they were. There's only two characters that are outside. But isn't and it's the bad guy? But isn't he just wearing like his stuff, like his? No, he's on a whole ass space suit. That's why I said I'm going on a tangent, and I wasn't a hundred. Yeah, the actual strong. bad guy was inside the ship in the, in the like driver's room. I don't know. I just think a little bit that I liked, like I said, I liked that it was a different type of action sequence Mm -hmm. because it was in a different area with different rules of the world. But a little bit the like walking around outside in space. I feel like there's not a lot of other than when he's like propelling himself. There's not a lot of like we're out in space and we're kind of floating around and stuff. But I didn't. I liked the episode. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I've made you mad any time that I've brought up a, a qualm. Well, if you had a good one, maybe I'd... <laughs> well, by the end of it, you were like, yeah, okay, sure. Or were no, you just I, saying I, that so I stopped talking? Here's what I'll agree with. They don't okay. really use the physics in space that they could have. There's even a moment in the next episode that I'm sure we'll talk about where they're like, didn't you pay attention to, to physics? Because of this, <laughs> this can't happen. And I don't think it's, like, real. <laughs> and not saying that I can't uh, totally – like, obviously, I know it's a cartoon and it's a sci-fi, mm-hmm. so it's going to be different. But, like, I've complimented the show in the past. It is pretty, like – it feels tangible for yeah. being a, a sci-fi western, kind of. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. it's a different world, but I can kind of see our world within it. Yeah, and moments like that felt a little bit more like uh, cartoony, but not too sure. bad. Not too bad. It's still grounded, and that's what I like about it. You know what, Zach? In a hundred years, when I have my bright cherry red spacesuit and I'm walking around on the outside of my ship, I'm gonna call you. And I'm gonna be like, "Hey, Zachary, <laughs> look at this." And I'm gonna press my little beep boop button that looks like the Buzz Lightyear <laughs> sticker, and I'm gonna boop. go zero gravity. No problem. <laughs> boop. <laughs> we've got a couple minutes left what are you thinking that we need to talk about um oh i wanted to say that this episode has some james bond vibes not Ooh, just yeah. because of the casino and i've never seen a james bond film so i'm speaking out of my ass <laughs> 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 not just because of the casino but because of the villain the villain kind of seems like a Bond villain to me in this one. Mm-hmm. And Spike kind of seems not like James Bond, but like his scene at the table with Faye seems a little Bondian. Yeah, so especially when they have the dialogue where he's like, you were cheating that whole time and I didn't out you. Like, because he was like one step ahead of her. And, and then immediately that she was a step ahead. everyone in the casino was like, cheater, pumpkin eater, cheater, <laughs> yeah. everybody, you guys. And everyone's like, up hey, arms. you guys, we Not that cheat over they here. wouldn't be upset over that, but it was funny. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was funny that we got – I didn't notice it until watching it with you. I didn't notice it the first time that the people uh, playing Blackjack in the beginning were the same old guys from the first episode that you mentioned would show up. So I I did like that, that they do show up. And it's not Mm -hmm. like – they show up in a different way. They're just people that inhabit the world. It's not like, oh, there's those silly guys again. It is Mm -hmm. kind of like I, I can see why I missed it the first time. Mm-hmm. Because they don't make a meal out of it being the same. No, guys, not at all. Which I which I like. What about you, Steven? What do you want to bring up yet? Um is there anything else super important? Um I like this episode. I think it's a good introduction mm-hmm. for Faye. Uh and I like the like idea of the casino they create. It's kinda cool, the space casino that looks like a I know. that's what I do think that it looks like a roulette thing on the outside is a little silly. Oh. I like idea (laughs) i like the idea of uh and speaking of the last jedi this totally has some uh finn and rose tico i'm pretty sure they stole that whole idea from this episode of television uh but what i do like about it is which the last jedi doesn't do is 
I don't exactly – it's a little on the nose that it's actually a roulette wheel on the outside. Well, how I else do, are you supposed to know if you're just <laughs> flying through space? If I see something that's like a they warehouse. A, they could have a sign that says casino still. Oh, I'm going to believe that? <laughs> <laughs> If I don't <laughs> see a spinny ball on a black and red board, how the f am I supposed to know what it is? I like the uh, idea of this amorphous spaceship looking thing that on the inside is a functioning casino. I like seeing Jet and Spike in the elevator and it obviously goes a bunch of different ways to figure mm -hmm. out. I also liked a little bit seeing more of the mechanics of the spaceship. I don't quite understand yeah. what it does for the ship, but in the part where Faye is, we haven't really, we didn't, I've really enjoyed the conversation we've had on this episode, but we've talked about a, we, did, we didn't really talk about a lot of stuff, yeah, uh, uh, but this is fun. Uh, I liked the part where there's the two like rotating things yeah. when, when Faye is trying to escape and she's trying to get from one to one. I, I don't think exactly those are like the gravity for. stabilizers. Yeah, that just shit. sounds like silly nonsense words. What does that mean? It's like what keeps there being gravity inside the ship. But why does it have to be these two big mouse wheel things? Well, because they rotate and they stabilize that. <laughs> okay, I but can't there do was it with no hands, boop, but... so I didn't. I didn't quite <laughs> get what was going on. What should That's we bring okay. up before we move on? We're almost done here. We got to talk about our who, who's the captain of the who gets to sit in the captain's chair this That's week. That's a good point, and I didn't put as much thought into it as I wanted to. I I did remember, but I I didn't quite. I don't know uh, the show. While being character driven, like each character kind of plays their part equally, other than Spike being kind of the main character, mm -hmm. it was hard for me to come up with. Let me hear what you've got first, and I'll kind of think on it. Well, I want to give a very big honorable mention to Jet because that suit is too flame. I like it's Jet's good to see episode. more of him in the episode. Yeah, I think but he's still I, like in the background, kind of. Because Jet is really close to my favorite character in this whole show. Mm hmm. Uh, we get a lot more Jet later on, and when you learn his backstory, I think a lot of, more of him makes sense. Nice. You do learn that he was a former cop in this episode. You know, I and I didn't pick that up specifically other than him kind of hinting that there there's more, like you've hinted at, there's more to the relationship between bounty hunters and police than what mm -hmm. what is outright told to us. I did not get that. I didn't comprehend well, that. Well, he said that he used to be a dog for the ISSP. I see. I asked Lily, "Is the ISSP the police?" And Lily said, "No." Lily doesn't know the name of the f***ing outro song. That was nice. So I'll, I'll call out Lily before we before we wrap up the program. <laughs> you know the song if you're listening and you watch the show with us. I've only watched three, four episodes now, and the song at the end of the episode, the great, the real folk blues, and mm -hmm. Lily was singing it and said, "The real soul blues." <laughs> and I was like, you f***ing small <laughs> sad disgusting person yeah. but it's i'm gonna full. give my my captain's chair this week <laughs> to spike spiegel super cool throughout the episode he wu-tang the blunt all good those were blunts those aren't just thin cigars you think like you no no spike is smoking a cigarette there that he they look like they're smoking blunts this whole episode Faye well, in the it, beginning Faye definitely had a had a blunt in the beginning well, I don't know because leaf. she bought it from that guy at the store from and was like in a cigar herbal, box. Yeah, but it was also at an herbal medication store. Okay. Well, maybe it's herbs and medication. Weed yeah. is not medication, it's a drug. It's a hard drug that should be treated as such. Thanks, and that Ronald should be Reagan. your takeaway from the podcast. Uh, who am I? I think because of a, a small but mighty thing. I'm going to give it to Ayn this episode because you can trust Ayn's judgment. Ayn isn't sure about Faye and makes it clear. Yeah. And and Ayn, uh, for an animated dog, I really do think the expression is great. I agree. And I do think this is an episode where everyone kind of plays their part. And I like to step away from giving it to the main character unless I'm really blown away by them. And I, so far, I've found Spike to be... Like, not the most interesting of main characters, kind of. Sure, okay. But that's it. Anything David you want to say to the him. patrons before we sign off this week? Uh, we hope you're enjoying this. We hope you're liking what we're doing here. I'm liking uh, doing it. I thought yeah, this I'm one having was a lot really of fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah, I love this. Usually when we podcast, I'm miserable, but this has been yeah, fun. Yeah, this is at least I can, you know. And I'm we've talked about before. afterwards. I think the future of our enterprise after you can't disappoint a podcast or after community 
isn't going to be looking at the shows second by second like we do on Community. Mm -hmm. And I think this conversation we just had is already showing me that we can do it the other way, too. Yeah. And it'd be fun. So that's nice. I love it. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us. Uh, Until next week. Next week, we'll be back to talk about some monkey diseases, to talk about mommy. I'm really Mm -hmm. excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I don't really have a sign-off for this one. one, so I don't think there's anything to say, but... The real soul (laughs) blues. At the end of this episode, it doesn't say see you, Space Cowboy. It says easy come, easy go. go. So that's what we'll leave you with. Goodbye, everybody. Easy come, easy go. We'll see you next week. All right, Steven, we're done. This was fun. It was fun to meet together. Usually when I do these things that I put out on weeks that we're not going to be around, I'm by myself and it feels a little empty and sad. You know, I record Mm -hmm. by myself a little bit. I'm like, hey, guys, just me. Steven's not here. It's (laughs) nice to actually have you here. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I I do at least as well as the cardboard cutout that you have me. Yeah, uh, at some things. There's there's some (laughs) things that, that it's got you beat on. I could never compare. <laughs> yes. Uh, so if you liked what you heard here, go ahead and sign up over at patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast. We're going through the entire series and film and live action reboot of Cowboy Bebop and then post that. Who knows? I like the idea of always having a rewatch podcast going over on at the Patreon and it's fun. It, it's it's a lot of fun and I think you guys will enjoy it. Uh, thanks for putting up with us this week as we're kind of dotting some I's and crossing some Q's. Uh, in Ooh, our personal lives, so we couldn't get the, the community episode out this week. But, you know, I'm kind of fine because we're getting so close to the end of this thing that I'm okay with milking this for as many oh, weeks we as we can. we got to stretch it, milk to, it, roll to get it, it, out there. Yeah. it. Yeah, Let I'm it feeling milked and stretched uh, as mm-hmm. well as I have in weeks. Uh, next week, we will be back, though, to continue in Season 5 of Community with Episode 2. It's Introduction to Teaching. Send us in your trivia, your episode MVP, and your favorite funny moment to can'tdisappointpodcast at gmail.com. Steven, where else can the people find us? Uh, you can hop in your space speeder and hypergate shuffle all the way over uh, to us on Twitter, over at You Can't Disappoint. We're on Instagram under the name Can't Disappoint Podcast. Then you can find us on YouTube and Facebook. Go ahead and just obliterate that like button. Uh, with the whole name of the show, You Can't Disappoint a Podcast. <laughs> from inside the Dreamatorium and from two and a half weeks ago, Black Lives Matter, <laughs> Trans Lives Matter. I hope we're not at war yet. I don't want to say anything too crazy because two and a half weeks from now, we, we might be f- we Things might va- never come back change. because we've been bombed. Oof. So, uh, nothing but love here. Well, I'm, I'm Zach. Uh, you're Steven. <laughs> and, I'm Steven. And, and we gladly accept and welcome new uh, world leader Putin. Uh, Jesus we're, Christ. Uh, we're big fans over not. here. Uh, we're very scared of you. Please don't hurt us. We won't say anything wrong. Yeah, and we'll see you next be. week if, if, Just let uh, us have our if the internet's show. still free. <laughs> Toodaloo! Powder blue. Powder blue. What can you do? She's powder blue. Powder blue. Powder blue. What can you do? She's powder blue I'll be true My powder blue Powder blue It's all for you It's all for you And you know it